So one month ago I decided to get an oral minoxidil medication. The purpose of this medication is to thicken your hair follicles to prolong the time when the follicles are in the anagen in the growing phase when they're actively producing new hairs and shorten the time when they're in the telogen resting phase. This video is going to be about me sharing with you potential side effects of this medication and whether I got any so far, but also potential benefits. What can you expect in terms of hair regrowth per square centimeter in three or six months when you are taking this medication based on the studies that have been done so far? And this is by no means the type of video why you should get on oral minoxidil as well. Don't see it as such, please. I just want to share with you my experience and then you can kind of form your own opinion and decide for yourself whether it is safe for you to take it or not. And as always, before we start, shout out to our sponsor, GoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. So why would I even start thinking about getting an oral minoxidil medication for stimulating my hair growth if there is topical minoxidil 5% like Rogaine, Regain, Kirkland, uh, Hims or Keeps, minoxidil, you name it. There is the estimation that as many as 50% of men considering minoxidil who want to start, they may not actually respond to it at all to begin with. So they need to do things like microneedling, they need to add a bunch of other additional ingredients like tretinoin to their minoxidil uh, solutions to boost the absorption of minoxidil, to improve the penetration of minoxidil. Many guys may have thick scalp, they may have not enough sulfur transferase in the scalp that is actually converting the inactive minoxidil 5% to the active min uh, ingredient minoxidil sulfate. And for this reason there is oral minoxidil. Also on top of that, if you are a guy with a large baldness that needs to be treated and you are diffused thinner, uh, you may want to also improve the hair uh, thickness on the donor area because maybe your donor zone is uh, very thin and the hair needs to be thicker if you want to consider a hair transplant. So we want to use something that works everywhere. So for all of these reasons, oral minoxidil could be considered. And there are actually some physicians out there, dermatologists, hair transplant doctors, whose research kind of con convinced me at least to give oral minoxidil a shot. Namely, doctors like Dr. Vanyo. The use of oral minoxidil for androgenetic alopecia. It has been, in my experience, a complete revolution. Dr. Sinclair, Dr. Bizenga. Oral minoxidil has changed the way we do consultation in a hair transplant. I do prescribe it a lot. Very few people have uh, real serious side effects. Uh, I start using it and I see, wow, it was working on me and Dr. Pat Vanage. These are physicians who have been prescribing minoxidil and who have been researching minoxidil for many, many years already. Why it is not FDA approved for hair loss? Well, I think there is this stigma which uh, goes back to 1979 where oral minoxidil have been actually approved uh, for, with the FDA for treating high blood pressure in a doses of 10 to 40 milligram up to 100 milligram. So these are high doses of oral minoxidil that these patients uh, who were treated for high blood pressure used to take and they're still taking nowadays. And here is the list of uh, some adverse effects that were observed. And I think this made many regulatory authorities like FDA a little bit hesitant or reluctant towards approving oral minoxidil for treating hair loss. Now, these physicians I have already named, they started kind of experimenting with very mild, very low doses of oral minoxidil. Very low doses between 0.5 and 2, 1 milligram daily in female patients and between 2.5 and 5 milligrams in males. I got a prescription from Dr. Bizenga for taking 5 milligram oral minoxidil. And I started with one milligram to ease into it a little bit, to observe my body, how I respond to it, where I get any of these heart related side effects like chest pain, chest uh, tightness, maybe swelling in my limbs or in my uh, face. Fortunately, I have not experienced any side effects so far, so I continue taking it. I will probably increase the dose to probably 1.5 milligram for the second month to see how I'm doing on it and 
potentially increase it all the way up to 2, 2.5 milligram. I have good head of hair right now. I'm not in a rush to stimulate uh, the shit out of my hair right now. So I actually take one and I will slowly uh, increase it over time because I've been taking Finasteride for three years. My hair loss is kind of stabilized. A study that I would like to bring to your attention, a study mainly concerned about the safety of using oral minoxidil for hair loss, study that also convinced me to start with it, was this multi-center study from 2021 which kind of summarizes uh, several studies uh, dozens of studies 27 physicians affiliated to these studies among them also dr vanyo and dr sinclair they are very known for that oral minoxidil uh, hair loss research contributions in the, this study they actually realized that among 1404 patients among them they were 67 percent women and 32 percent men only 1.7 percent discontinued or had to discontinue this treatment because of some side effects. Now, what were the main side effects? 15% of these 1400 patients had hypertrichosis, that means excessive hair growth, not just on your hair, but also head, but also on your body, uh, beard, facial hair growth, chest, back, you know, everywhere where your your body has the potential to develop some hair follicles. There was also lightheadedness by 1.7% of these uh, 1400 patients. Uh, fluid retention 1.3% which is quite common. You can retain more water in your limbs, also in your face uh, if you use oral minoxidil, but some guys get it also from topical minoxidil. They get the puffy eyes. Uh, that's also the same thing which is actually the periorbital edema that you can see here and this is 0.3% of these patients who got it also from oral minoxidil. Also headache, 0.4%, tachycardia, 0.9%, uh, and then also insomnia uh, traveled to fall asleep by 0.2% of individuals. And they kind of concluded that no life-threatening adverse effects were observed. I didn't have any uh, massive shedding yet. I'm noticing a little bit of shedding last week, but that might not be uh, directly attributed to oral minoxidil. Could be some seasonal thing as well. Uh, we'll see, I'm gonna give it more months and let you know, guys. So what motivates me to use oral minoxidil Minoxidil is obviously the con convenience factor. I just take a pill every day. I can also microdose it and adjust uh, the dosing um, and play with it a little bit to get like a good application and not uh, such a high side effect potential. And number two, uh, the effectiveness of oral minoxidil. From the studies so far, it seems like the response rate is really, really good. Even by doses as low as 0.25 milligram of oral minoxidil, as this 24 week study shows, there was a 40 to 60% response rate. By increasing the dose onto 1.25 milligram, as this study on 32 patients shows, there was a 78.1% response rate. And by an intake of 2.5 to 5 milligram of oral minoxidil, as this study on 41 patients shows, there was a 90.2% response rate. And all of these three studies had a six month study period in common. For example, in this open label study, an open label means that both patients treated with oral minoxidil and doctors, they knew that they were using the oral minoxidil treatment so there may be some expectation from the patient's perspective that it's going to actually work well and that placebo kind of also playing into the results here uh, so I need to mention that but these were Norwood 3 to Norwood 5 already like pretty intermediate to advanced level boldness uh, type of gentlemen and 43% of them they showed excellent improvements okay namely in three months they experienced 14.3% improvements in hair regrowth per target area which was one square centimeter and after uh, 24 weeks which is six months uh, the experienced uh, compared to the baseline 19.3 percent improvement in target area uh, hair count Minoxidil peak concentration can be found in your blood plasma after one hour and it's half-life it's 4.2 hours. In order to get more constant and consistent minoxidil presence in the serum while avoiding high minoxidil serum concentrations especially within the first hour of dosing which could likely lead to heart related side effects it could actually make sense to split the 2.5 or 5 milligram tablet into two daily doses and based on this 
medical review of 27 oral minoxidil studies for hair loss, it describes that higher doses of 5 mg of oral minoxidil were actually divided over a day multiple times. So this could be a more effective suggestion for dosing the 5 mg oral minoxidil tablet. Now for all of you guys who are interested in oral minoxidil, you need to do your own research, uh, check out other channels, check out other doctors who have done extensive research on this medication. I'm gonna list them also below. For all of you guys who are interested in a hair transplant, but you don't know what the next best step should be towards getting your hair back the right way without being scammed or without ending up with a bad result, unnaturalness, overharvested donor, and all these things, make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can learn more about how I can help you out one-on-one. -on -one. Check out also the link to my mentoring website where you can read more about the testimonials and success stories of other guys that I have helped personally one-on-one -on -one, and see you in the next video guys. Avoid a failed or unnatural hair transplant. Receive best recommendations on clinics, doctors, avoid wasting your time with treatments that don't work while your hair loss keeps on progressing further and receive my opinion on your hair situation.